Gordon Ramsay is well known for being a hater. As you've seen in our previous video, there are plenty of things that Gordon hates. Some are simple, others are quite specific. Yeah, put pineapple on pizza. Of course, there are more than 10 things that the chef hates. So we searched even more to be able to show you another top 10 things that Gordon hates. He can't even boil a f***ing egg. Thin Mints and Samoa's Girl Scout cookies. Pretty disappointing. There's the American flag, and there's Willie right. Nelson, and then we have Girl Scout cookies. There are few American traditions as popular as Girl Scout cookies. Little girls have been selling these delicious snacks since 1917, keeping people away from their diets ever since. Or maybe you should get a Scout salad instead. Until he made an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Gordon has never eaten any of the cookies before. Jimmy brought a platter of tagalongs, thin mints, and Samoa cookies for the chef. They even brought Ramsay a glass of milk, completing the whole experience. Visually, they look like dog biscuits. You're a man, man. From the first bite, everyone could see we were heading to a classic Gordon Ramsay reaction. Well, they're, they're okay. What's That's that? a tagalong. Uh-huh, it's what, got like peanut butter in there. But it went all downhill from there. Now it was time for the Samoa cookies. After his first bite, you could see Gordon was feeling the cookies. That's okay. a bit weird. Yeah, I don't like those either. No. Those aren't my favorite. The chef didn't even swallow the cookie and chose to spit them out. Thin mints didn't fare much better. So that's like a cheap after eight dinner mint. Ramsay then spat those out as well. We're just glad there weren't any Girl Scouts for Gordon to criticize. I just wish they could cook. <laughs> <laughs> But before we move on to more of those pesky things Gordon hates, show us your love. Hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on more videos. Now, back to the show. Being asked what his last meal would be. Pretty disappointing. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit. Gordon has thousands and thousands of interviews under his belt. With that in mind, he also has probably answered the same questions a few dozens of times. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. This happened in a Reddit Q&A Gordon was doing to promote his mobile game. At first, he pranked the question asker, saying that this question was good. Then came the Gordon we all know and love. The chef stated that he had been asked that about 2,000 f***ing times. Oh, Jesus, just when you think it couldn't get any worse. First, the chef said that he wasn't that bad to be on death row. Oh! Some of the chefs under him might disagree, though. I'm gonna kill him. F***ing arrogant. If it was my last supper, ask me that question in 40 years' time when I'm 90 years of age, I can't go to the bathroom properly, and I need my ass wiped on a regular basis. I need the toilet, excuse me. I knew they'd come out quicker than they went in. Shortcuts. Pretty disappointing. My, my prep cook gets 20 hours a week. That's not enough time to make fresh food. Is that why all the food's frozen? Gordon is a true professional. For years, he worked harder than most, honing his craft and eventually becoming one of the world's most famous chefs. Food was my calling, I think, because that was the way I could sort of disappear. Disappear, travel, learn, and get really excited about something. Gordon is nothing else but a hard and dedicated entrepreneur. That's the reason why the chef hates when people try to take shortcuts. Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a f Ramsay is in love with the art of cooking and would never give up the years it took to master his craft. That's why he's so annoyed when he sees chefs doing this. Frozen crab, frozen shrimp, pre-packaged ravioli. It's more like eating a badly run old folks home. I get the boiled eggs in a bag, done, peeled. You buy in boiled eggs? Yes. If you have the job done quicker, you're removing the essence and the true passion of why you're a chef in the first place. Whether it's a plumber, an electrician, or even a police officer, and getting it done quickly for the sake of it is not the smartest idea. You can see this motto on his many shows, where he always believed in putting the time and effort to get things right. Like he said, do it properly or don't do it at all. When it's brown, it's cooked. When it's black, it's f***ed. Truffle oil. Pretty disappointing. One of the most pungent. Ridiculous ingredients Ridiculous. ever known to chef. Truffle oil is an ingredient that recently became famous. It is usually used to impart the flavor and aroma of truffles into any dish. Truffle oil has many fans, but also many people who are staunchly against it. Gordon, for example. Although the chef isn't alone in hating the ingredient, many of his peers, like Anthony Bourdain, not as edible as Astroglide and made from the same stuff. And Joe Bastianich. You know the truffle oils are made by perfumists that have no white truffles in them? Ramsay, however, was probably the one that panned it the hardest. Back in season two of Master Chef, a contestant actually used truffle oil in her audition. The contestant made a grave mistake by using the oil, and Gordon let her know that. I think you've just uh, put your apron up in flames, let me tell you that. The worst thing to me is truffle oil. That thing needs to be let down. They pour it and it comes out in abundance. This thing needs to be let out in tiny, tiny little amounts. 
Generally, if you go to a restaurant and you see truffle oil on the menu, it's a good reason to run away. I can smell it from here. It stinks. Frozen food. Pretty disappointing. This golden trout from uh, Northern California comes in frozen. To many people, frozen food is a huge help. They sit in your freezer for a long period of time, ready to be prepared whenever you're in a hurry. Look at that. You must have hundreds of portions of stock. All of this is nice and fine, but Gordon firmly believes that frozen food doesn't belong anywhere near a fancy, high-priced restaurant. It's just frozen crap, reheated and... How can you make a slice of chicken look so bland? The chef might be belligerent, but one of his main concerns is always the consumer experience. You're recommending that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, Take this episode of Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon scolds the restaurant for using exclusively frozen food. Treating food like a processing plant, you have driven away more customers than you could ever imagine. The way he solved the frozen food problem? By throwing them away. God, what a state of that. A year old. The restaurant relied so much on frozen food that Gordon found $12,000 worth of the stuff. The only thing left in the freezer? A single lime. Gordon believes that food has to be as fresh as possible, and there's just no getting around that. It might cost more, but it will also attract more customers. Goodbye, catering. <laughs> Hello, restaurant. Dinner parties. Pretty disappointing. Dinner parties. A f***ing chef's nightmare. Professional chefs of the highest caliber have failed in front of Gordon. They made professional grade dishes and then were themselves chewed out by the chef. So they both simmer now for 20 minutes, okay? Then the blind tasters will taste them and you'll lose. So it's surprising that anyone was ever courageous enough to invite Ramsay to a dinner party. What's less surprising, however, is the fact that Gordon loathes dinner parties. The pressure to perform well in the kitchen means menus are often safe or stuck in a time warp. The first time he voiced his discontent for these events, Gordon was more mannered. You have to be so diplomatic. When the food is so crap, you can't say anything. For an interview with Playboy, I can't sit there and pretend everything's delicious when it's not. One year after the interview, it seemed like Ramsay's hatred for dinner parties caught on with his friends. The chef stated that thankfully on the back of my reputation, I don't get invited to many. He also said that for dinner parties, he always checks to see if the hosts have any dogs. That way he can just feed the food to the dog and not have to suffer through it. When it comes to food, Gordon surely won't ever be diplomatic. He even criticized the cake his mother made for him for his birthday. The chef said that all he wanted to do with it was stick a rocket in the end and send it up. How can you do that to my mom? Vegetarians slash vegans. Pretty disappointing. The world's a much safer place if we eat the animals that could eat us. Vegetarians and vegans can be very passionate. Some firmly believe in their cause and want to spread it to others. Others just want to do what they think is best, not really caring about what others do. Throughout the years, Gordon has gotten a lot of flack for his views on vegetarianism and veganism. Being the meat lover he is, the chef seems resolute in teasing vegans and vegetarians alike. This is the first for me, a grilled Caesar salad. No, but they actually grilled the lettuce. For example, when a fan sent a picture of her vegan lasagna to him, the chef's reply? He said he was a member of PETA, people eating tasty animals. Sending food pic to Gordon is similar to throwing yourself into the lion's den, so that doesn't come as a surprise. The chef also said that his biggest nightmare would be if any of their kids ever turned vegetarian. He said he would sit them on the fence and electrocute them. During one episode of The F Word, Gordon even had a little bit of a tense moment with the pop girl group Girls Aloud. I'm a vegetarian. You're vegetarian? Did you not get the message? Vegetarians aren't welcome. <laughs> While this might have been in jest, it certainly wasn't received that way. Plus, when he was asked if there was anything that he was allergic to, do you know what Ramsey said? Vegans. Oh. Enjoy the potatoes. I'll come and see you later, thank yes? You, thank Vegetarian. you. Bloody hell. The Wagyu fad. Pretty disappointing. This is the most amazing sirloin. You can see it's got that wonderful marble. Have you ever heard about Wagyu? It is a brand of beef cattle from Japan, and it is regarded as one of the best beef in the whole world. Kobe beef is the most famous Wagyu brand, limited to just three to 5,000 cattle a year. The Wagyu beef is predisposed to intense marbling, meaning it contains a lot of fat inside the muscle, making it look like marble. Because of all this, and the big hype around it, the beef has a pretty high cost. At some restaurants, 12 ounces of the beef costs over $160. With Gordon's fascination with meat, he should love it, right? The secret is to keep them nice and moist. Gordon actually likes the meat so much, he wishes others would respect it more. It's a special cut. It needs to be treated with a little bit of respect. Everywhere you go now, there's f***ing Wagyu meatballs. Preserve it a little bit. Rest it. Allow it to become special. Don't waste that. Really important. 
this sounds just like Gordon, asking for the special kind of meat to be given the respect it deserves. Ironically enough, Gordon does actually serve Wagyu meatballs at Hell's Kitchen. Can you say that name again of that? Togarashi spices. Togarashi. Togarashi. Foam on food. Pretty disappointing. Nothing says fancy dining quite like a blob of foam. Well, that and when waiters sweep up your breadcrumbs with that tiny scoop. Foam has, over the years, become a part of molecular gastronomy. The benefit of foam is that it can add flavor with little actual substance. The more gelatin, the more protein, and the thicker your foam. When Gordon was asked what food trend should die immediately, his response was foam. The thinnest foam for cocktails and such is known by the horrible name espuma. That's just three quarters of 1% gelatin. When a foam hits a plate, unless you've eaten it within three or four seconds, at the end, it looks like some sort of toxic scum on a stagnant pool. To sum it up, Gordon said that we need to get rid of the foam and keep foam for shaving. But Gordon revealed that the hatred wasn't for all types of foam. His main problem is with savory foams. The latest one I had was in St. Paul. Someone gave me a bone marrow foam. Now, when I think about having bone marrow, I don't think about it as a foam. Great foil for some french fries. Chef Mike. Pretty disappointing. Chef Mike, you've been so busy, it's time that you took a little vacation. You might have a Chef Mike of your own just in the kitchen. That's your good old microwave. While Chef Mike might have helped you before, Gordon isn't much of a fan. Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salads. Take this episode where Gordon watched the staff of Michonne's using the microwave over and over again. What's that noise? The microwave. Ramsey was literally face palming. When Ramsey showed the staff of Michonne's, you could see the difference between reheating and cooking it fresh. That's what I'm screaming for. They're, right. they're ready, they're right. delicious. During Gordon's visit to El Greco, Gordon found a kitchen where Chef Mike was by far the most overworked staff member. Whenever there's lights on in this restaurant, Chef Mike's working. He's a dedicated employee. While the head chef didn't seem to care, Ramsey was aghast. The zucchini looked like something out of an alien movie. Look at the presentation. It's depressing. Almost like it's uh, been in the microwave for an hour. To save the restaurant, Ramsey made a dramatic gesture. It's time to say goodbye oh, that's oh. to a very busy Chef Mike. Ready, Chef Mike, yeah! oh. I'm not dead. So, do you share some of Gordon's hatred? Let us know in the comments below. Let's start off with that in there. Let's go in there. Don't miss out on your chance to win an iPhone X. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Then click the description below to increase your odds of winning. Good luck.